Hi, this is Billy Bean here with a World News Update. Today's date is January 2, 2024. The time is about 8 a.m. in Texas. This is episode 105. Some of the things we'll, we will cover. U.S. stocks down. That equals the deep state's war plan. Out of money, take us to war. The U.S. military hits the Houthis. Iran preps for war. Ukraine hits civilians and Russia preps for war with NATO. Some of my sources are God in the Bible, Patriot subscribers, Borzikman, Crux, uh, Hal Turner, War News 24-7, uh, Daily Mail, yeah, plus. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I have a Patriot subscriber, uh, so we'll draw a little map of the U.S. And um, we know we had yesterday a giant earthquake over in, near Honshu, Japan. And that was right on one of the plate tectonics. That was on a little peninsula, Noto Peninsula. So I have a Patriot subscriber who's talking about the Pennsylvania National Guard. Uh, she says, already they've just left from Cambridge Springs near Erie. It's a group of about 760 plus. So we saw, I reported the Oklahoma National Guard. Now this group is going to the Horn of Africa, where we're having that soon to, to come dust up with Yemen. This group is going to Kosovo. So I'll have to do some more research on what's going on with Serbia and Kosovo. I'm sure it's something juiced up by NATO, most likely. So I'm going to begin by covering uh, these earthquakes. Uh, we do have impacts coming in upon the Earth. Today we're supposed to have some CMAs uh, that'll come in, uh, impact the Earth today or tomorrow. Supposed to generate a magnetic storm of G1, G2. But what we have seen, we saw first the earthquake here in this area near Japan, a 7.6. And then on January 1, we had off of California in Los Angeles County in the Palo Verdes area. And I did a report on this some months ago about the fault line here. But it was offshore, that was a 4.1 that took place at a depth of 7 miles. So that's going on. But this was after, and this was offshore about 12 miles. The earthquake that struck near Japan uh, was also offshore. It's so a 7.6, the Noto Peninsula. And uh, we have, from this, we have dead reported today, 13 injuries, uh, about 150. Now, a tsunami did come in in this area. It was a 13 to 16 foot tsunami that did come in and now we're getting a depth in this area of nine kilometers. Initially it was reported as a depth of zero and zero, zero kilometers, zero miles. So that's going on. Now we have fires, we have streets split and as I said where this Earthquake took place, was on a plate tectonic, 
And so after this, we had this occur. Uh, so this is in the Pacific Ocean. And then it traveled across to the U.S. So we can expect, and now 150 aftershocks have taken place. I submit this shaking here is going to continue shaking near California because it's, it's impacting the uh, plate between Japan and the U.S. in the Pacific Ocean. Now, tragically, what happened uh, this morning, yeah, about January 2, about 5.45 uh, p.m., of course, we have a time change, in Japan, there was, uh, near Tokyo, there was a, coast, a Japanese Coast Guard plane taking off. I had five uh, Coast Guardsmen on it that collided with a commercial plane coming in to land at Tokyo Haneda Airport. And both burst into flames uh, on the commercial flight all 379 people on board, including the crew, were set lived. The plane did burst into flames. Now, on the Japanese Coast Guard plane, five are dead and one was still alive with serious injuries. But I submit this crashing of a plane taking off and one coming in could be impacted by this earthquake that has tilted our changed GPS markers in, all over Japan. So that's going on. Uh, recently we had in Iceland, so here is the U.S., Canada, Greenland, Iceland. And we know we're seeing uh, volcanoes going off here. And what happened to the GPS marker on Iceland as the uh, vo first volcano eruption took place, the GPS marker went up and then the volcano uh, erupted. The GPS marker went down. But now it's going back up, which indicates there's going to be a second eruption that comes from Mike from around the world information. So I submit that this plane crash could be related to this earthquake and what's going on underneath Japan, changing the GPS markers. So that's going on. So we can expect to see earth events, earthquakes, volcanoes, and uh, when we are having uh, uh, deep earth changes, we can uh, also expect on a cyclic basis impacts in money. So we have this morning a report from Gregory Monterino bonds or sell-off and the stock market in the U.S. is dramatically going down and we know that a stock market crash has been anticipated. So there's not going to be any money or weapons and we understand that the U.S. plus the U.K. are out of weapons stockpiles. So no more weapons and no more money to Ukraine. So that's going on. But when we see uh, banks closing, stock market down, that's when the deep state wants to take us to war. I submit NATO is doing everything they can to get World War III going. And now we'll cover 
what's going on in Israel. So we've got Gaza and uh, we got Jordan, Iraq, Iran. Okay, Syria, Lebanon, and oh, by the way, we have reports now that comes from 107 that Israel has hit uh, Lebanon a few days ago with a nuke tipped bomb as they've done in Syria a few years ago. So Israel is using nuclear tipped bombs. So that's going on. And now we have this. Israel, yeah, so the report, Israel is hitting Gaza with unguided bombs. That means uh, as Benjamin Netanyahu told the Israeli government, it's going to take about a year. Yeah, when you have a population you want to slaughter that's two million strong, yeah, it's going to take a lot of bombs. And now we have this. Oh, yeah. And uh, just overnight, the Israeli judicial um, group, uh, are denying and, and not giving Benjamin Netanyahu the control of the judicial system in Israel. That was going on before uh, the shadow U.S. and the shadow Israel uh, brought about this Hamas attack. Benjamin Netanyahu was on the brink of a coup. The millions of Israeli people were turning out to protest because Benjamin Netanyahu wanted to take control of the uh, judicial system, so he made the laws like a dictator. Well, that's the judicial system is standing up. We understand the Israeli people still want to take down Benjamin Netanyahu. So, but. He's still in charge. Now we have this. What Israel is using on the civilian, unarmed civilian population in Gaza. So they're using unguided bombs um, to just kill people. They're also using white phosphorus bombs that uh, produce uh, strong burning on the skin. They hit you and can burn down to the bone, and that's being seen in Gaza. White phosphorus, a colorless chem that's generally banned around the world. But hey, Israel is in a hurry to annihilate the civilian population in Palestine. They want to sell that a waterfront property, at least by 2030, they need to kill all the civilians and then do away with the rubble, build those new high-rise hotels and sell property. And what they're using, they're also using J dams, which is a bunker buster, and unguided missiles and the white phosphorus. So, yeah, they're using everything they can. Currently, uh, uh, it's believed dead, uh, or the Palestinian civilians, about 25 to 30,000, 60 to 70 uh, percent of which are women and children under the age of 16. Now, it's come out that the IDF uh, has probably lost, they've probably lost maybe 7,000 so far. So, yeah, that's going on. Yeah. And now we have this. Uh, Russia and Syria. Oh, yeah. So, we have now, we have Russia and Syria. And they're operating against Israel and took down on December 30, 
10 Israeli guided bombs and three guided cruise missiles coming from Israel into Syria. That was taken down by Russia. Russia is standing up in Syria. And now we have this from the Jerusalem Post. So there, here is, here is Africa, Egypt. So we had a meeting on December 27. That was between King Abdullah of Jordan and President al-Sisi of Egypt. There had been reports that the U.S. was going to pay Egypt and Jordan to take the Palestinian civilians from Gaza and also the West Bank. But this uh, meeting between King Abdullah and President al-Sisi they came out and made a public statement. Uh, they reject taking refugees from Palestine, and they call for a ceasefire. So that's going on. Now, we have this reported by Hal Turner. Now I'm going to clear this board and draw another map. So we can get into what's happening in the Red Sea. So we've got Israel, Gaza. We've got Africa. We've got Egypt. The Suez Canal is in this area. We've got the Red Sea. Here we have Saudi Arabia and Yemen in this area. Iran over here. So, now, this is coming out from Hal Turner. And for some reason, here in Gaza. So, in Gaza was a NATO general from the UK. His name was... Hambrick Thomas, H-O-M-A-S. And he was the leader, commander, of a group called the British Tiger Battalion. Now, it's unclear a battalion is, is 1 to 5,000, so it's unclear how many he had with him. But it's being reported that this general was in Gaza with his group, the British Tiger Battalion, to rescue UK hostages being held by Hamas. Now, a bomb was dropped by Israel on the house where this UK general and his a British Tiger Battalion was holed up, and they were all killed. The chatter is, it was sabotaged by Israel, because it's believed generally, Israel, the last thing Israel wants is actual hostages rescued who can give accurate reports of what happened on the Hamas alleged attack on October 7. So that's being reported. And other individuals say, uh, remember the USS Liberty? That happened about 1967. Uh, the U.S. military had a ship, the USS Liberty, off of Egypt in international waters, and Israel tried to sink it. I have a Patriot subscriber whose husband was on the USS Liberty and has firsthand knowledge. And 34 sailors were killed and uh, many were injured because Israel tried to sink that ship. The ship was an intel surveillance ship, but it was parked away from Israel in international waters. 
So if you don't think that Israel can turn on a dime and sabotage uh, a, a country alleged to be its ally, we'll guess again. That's why many of the ships, U.S. ships, are staying away from Israel. Yeah, they believe that could take place. Now, we're seeing a potential evidence of a sabotage against an ally by Israel with the bombing of General Hambrick Thomas and his group. Could anyone reasonably believe that a UK general was in Gaza and Benjamin Netanyahu and his shadow government did not know about it? No, that's not reasonable. Now we have more going on with the Hooties uh, trying to stop shipping in the Red Sea on a, of all commercial ships. And we had the Hooties over the weekend. Uh, they had like four uh, boats with uh, missiles on them and they attacked a Marsk uh, commercial cargo ship, the Hang Hao, uh, who put out two distress calls. And uh, the uh, these uh, distress calls were responded uh, by the U.S. military from the USS Gravely and also um, helicopters, Seahawks from the Eisenhower Carrier Group. And then the Hooties were firing on the Marsk cargo ship and the USS Gravely and the helicopters from the Eisenhower were taking down the uh, missiles and drones that the Hooties were firing at the Marsk ship. Then the Hooties turned and began to fire upon the USS Gravely and the helicopters from the Eisenhower, at which time the U.S. military responded and sank three out of four of the missile boats the Hooties were operating and killed 10 hooties. So now uh, the uh, what's going on is uh, overnight, I think that was about December 31, maybe January 1, the U.S. military went into Yemen and they took out their airport radar and comms system. So that's been taken out. It's believed, and according to Hal Turner, letters were sent on Sunday, that would be December 31, by NATO to the governments of, no, I believe it was just from the U.S., uh, to the governments of Saudi Arabia and Iran to uh, prep uh, that the U.S. military was going to take down the Houthis in Yemen. So then the U.S. military fired upon the airports inside Yemen to take out all their comm systems. And now we have this. It's believed that uh, the shadow NATO we have in this area an HMS diamond. We also have near the Venezuela Guyana dust up a second UK warship, the HMS Trent. It's believed by many that the shadow NATO will try to take out the Trent near South America, Venezuela, Guyana area, and take out the HMS Diamond with Russian missiles and say 
it was Russia, Russia, Russia. With the stock market going down, the shadow U.S. government, the shadow U.S. military, the shadow NATO wants to juice up war. So that's going on. And now we have this. That uh, so on December Sunday, December 31, the U.S. military had this dust up with the hoodies. Then we understand Iran has two warships in this area. Two right here. So this ought to be cozy, shouldn't it? With all these uh, U.S. ships in that area. Yeah, so that's going on. Now we have this. We have uh, from Russia uh, a Br uh, to the British ambassador, Russia warns the UK and Russia warns the UK government in London that events could escalate and pointed out that UK has the HMS Diamond in a very volatile area so that's going on now it's believed that uh, Russia could strike in three to five days and this happened uh, on Sunday and Russia we know is allied with Iran so yeah that's going on and part of this is in response to a Russian ship being hit in Crimea also. So we have Russia, <clears throat> Ukraine, and we have Israel, uh, warlike situations going on. And we have many nations involved and threats going out. And now we have this, the UK warship. This is from Hal Turner on December 29, the HMS Diamond. And chatter is, and intel reports are, NATO plans to sink the HMS Diamond with a Russian missile and blame it on Russia. So that's going on. So, the UK needs to get, have a heads up, don't they? Yeah. So, now we have this going on in South America. This has to do with Venezuela, Guyana. And we have in this area the HMS Trent. And chatter is the Shadow NATO will try to sink the Trent also with a Russian missile. Venezuela, on, uh, according to the BBC, has moved 5,600 troops to this area. And Venezuela claims 1,000 kilometers of Guyana. So that's going on. Okay. Now we have this from Organic Prepper. Talking about the Marsk Hang How to distress calls. The Hooties were attacking the USS Gravely and the Eisenhower sank three out of four of the boats and killed ten. Within 12 hours, Iran had two warships in this area. Now, Hal Turner is reporting that the U.S. military hit. Yemen on January 1, the Sinai Yemen airport, and took out all of their communications. So we see moves going on. And now, yeah, and we have also this going on. Uh, so we've got Syria. Lebanon, 
And we know uh, the Houthis are a proxy for Iran, as is Syria and Lebanon. And we had on January 1, Iran pulls all of their troops, the Islamic uh, Revolutionary Guard. So they pulled all their people out of Syria uh, yesterday, January 1. That was following uh, them putting two warships in the Red Sea uh, on Sunday, December 31. The next day, they pull all their troops out. They have thousands there. They're back to Iran. Yeah. And we have rumors. Iran worship in the Red Sea, and it's now two. Chatter. Iran also has scalar we weapons, which is uh, equal to can do nuclear damage over a large area. Yeah, it's believed that many of these nations, Russia and Iran, other nations, well, the U.S. and China and U.K. would also have these kind of weapons. They, they do as much damage as a nuke, but you don't have the radiation fallout called scalar weapons. And we saw something like that used. Let me get... Uh, that was used in the Morocco earthquake. A few months ago, when Morocco had an earthquake, it was about, what, a 7 to an 8? And it was reported by Keith Hunter, uh, an investigator with, with uh, earth, earthquakes, volcanoes. He uses the stars to predict where earthquakes, um, space objects, to predict earthquakes. Now, he reported... A scalar underground weapon was used that on Morocco that was fired from three points, and that was um, in Australia, Pine Gap, in Israel, Demona, and in the UK, Yorkshire. And they triangulated Morocco with scalar weapons underground that produced this earthquake. So we see uh, scalar weapons can also be used to produce massive earthquakes. And now we have this. Uh, this is part of the UK. So we've got things cooking and the Israel uh, Red Sea area. And also with Lebanon, Iran, Syria. So things are going on there. Now we'll look at Russia. We'll look at Ukraine. So we've got um, Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhzhia, Kherson, Odessa. So we've got Crimea. And recently two ships were taken out in this area. By, uh, so, NATO sank two ships. I think most people know that it isn't Ukraine doing this. So, Borzikman is reported. Uh, then, in response, Russia took out all the NATO recon radar in Kiev and Lviv and Kharkiv, and in Smela. So that went on December 29. And now we have this. What's happening uh, December 29? That would have been Saturday. In uh, we had an attack on civilians in this area by Ukraine. Before that happened, Ukraine, NATO, uh, took down two of uh, Russia's ships 
uh, and Crimea. Then Russia responded with 150 missiles, took out the radar, and um, Russia fired 150 missiles. They killed 11, 20 injured. Kiev, Kharkiv, Odessa, they used long-range missiles, took out uh, Ukraine's air defense in many locations, and Russia launched, launched their missiles from Crimea. And Russia takes back all the land gained by Ukraine during its fall offensive. And then we had... This happened. The U.S. and NATO deployed troops to the border with Poland. We know Kaliningrad is a Russian enclave. It's right here. This is called the Suwaki Gap Corridor. We've got Belarus, Poland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. So that's going on. So now Russia uh, also hit Ukraine with 150 missiles. One, one missile went over Poland. So one missile in this area. So during this 150 barrage of missiles all over Ukraine, one missile went over Poland. Uh, it went inside Poland, and it was over Poland for three minutes. And it went inside Poland about 12 to 30 miles. Russia is saying, oh, my bad. So the missile went over Poland and then made a turn and came back into Ukraine. And what happened was there was no NATO response. This happened December 29 at night. There was no air defense, no radar tracking, no alerts. Now, NATO refutes this and claims uh, they were tracking it and they were scrambling a flight. But this came... This statement by NATO came out after the information about Russia putting the missile over Poland. And it was over Poland for three minutes and deep inside their territory. I submit to you, uh, Russia has an excellent uh, guided missile system. This was a test, I believe. This wasn't a, oh, oops, my bad. I don't buy that. Yeah, it went 19 miles or 30 kilometers over Poland. And now we have this, yeah. And then in response to all these 150 missiles and this one over Poland, Ukraine then went across the border and used U.S. Abrams tanks, which is, um, Ukraine is not supposed to be using NATO equipment to go inside Russia, but they did. And they uh, hit a residential area like a Christmas market. It was all women uh, civilians. And they had uh, 50 dead and injured 150. They used U.S. cluster bombs, which are generally banned in uh, most nations around the earth. Russia then called an emergency meeting with the U.N. They blamed the U.S. and U.K. for this attack and have stated that they will respond. And we had intel after this that Russia was on high alert for their long-range bombers. So that's going on. Now, 
And then uh, through the eyes of Anaya K., a Polish journalist, after this missile went over Poland, she reported Poland was searching for signs of a Russian missile, but they didn't find any because it didn't explode. It just went in and turned around and came out. And now the uh, ambassador for Poland is forecasting that Poland's going to get a lot of U.S. help. Well, I got this to say. The American people are united and rising up against our shadow government and saying very loudly to our Congress, no more money for war. That includes Ukraine and Israel. And no more money for NATO. Mm -mm. Nope. So that's going on. And now we have this. So I'll draw another map here of what Russia is doing with regard to strategic bombers. Strategic bombers uh, are used for long-range heavy bombs as opposed to technical bombers used for lighter bombs. Now this happened. So we have Russia. This is uh, last night. Uh, January 1 at night, uh, actually January 1, because this report just came out to January 2, from Russia, they put in the air 17, these are Russian Tu-95s, uh, and many of them went to the black, uh, I think these fired from the Caspian Sea. So this is going on. Plus, Russian uh, is firing from ships it has in the Black Sea. So here's Russia. Here's Ukraine. We've got the Caspian Sea. So just last night, uh, more bombs are coming in. From these TU-95s and also from ships in the Black Sea. So they're hitting Ukraine from here and from here. Now, what Hal Turner found troubling was, in addition to these TU-95s firing on Ukraine was... Last night, early this morning, Russia also put in the air six TU-22s and TU-160s that took off from the far east side of Russia and turned north. Now the chatter is they're in position to hit Finland. Are NATO locations being set up in this area? So it's unknown where they are right now. So then, Russia hit Ukraine with 25 missiles in one hour. This is from the planes I was just talking about. A, near Kiev, and they hit power plants, air defense, industry. And uh, so that's going on. So we see, we see money going down in the U.S. Potential stock market crash today or this week. And the thinking with the people who are in the know is when the uh, deep state uh, banking system, a stock market goes down, they like to take us to war. And I've presented several scenarios where potential sabotage could be taking place. So let's have a short prayer. So this is based on Matthew 24, King James Version, Isaiah 27, Jeremiah 23. O oh Lord, vaporize the bunkers of our enemies. That's the title of the prayer. The Lord says, 
but none deceive you. I, the Lord, will slay your enemies, the piercing crooked serpent and the dragon in the sea and desert. Leviathan and Behemoth will disappear. Can any hide from God who sees all of heaven and the earth? The cup of iniquity is full for the evil ones. Though your enemies try to hide in rocks, in caves, under the sea and in starry nest, I, your God, will slay them. Their hidey holes, their bunkers, shall become slippery places in darkness. Love and light will vaporize them and their ancestral markers upon the earth will shimmer and fade forever. And we say thank you, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, Omenica, Yeshua, and God the Holy Spirit. I say to my family and friends, remain steady out there, continue to pray. God is in charge, and He is on the move. I love you, and I'll see you soon.